to be able to live life with your passion and make a living from it is one of life's most rewarding things. George Colley has done exactly that. Having loved electronics from a young age, this is what has become his life. Born at Crown Street Women's Hospital in Sydney, 1934, George is the eldest of four children, Norma, Merle and Ambrose. His mother was Gertrude and his father Frank. I was born in Sydney actually, <laughs> the Crown Street Women's Hospital, where all our kids were born and uh, in, in 1934, 18 to the 10th, 1934. There's myself, then there's Norma, then Merle and then Ambrose is the sequence. They were pretty poor in the late 30s, living in a shack that only had dirt floors at South Tacoma, then moving to Boyce Avenue in 1937. War had broken out and life was pretty tough, although it didn't seem so at the time. It didn't seem tough at the time because it was normal to us. And we just cruised along with it. And that's what you lived with. That's the way it was. They had no electricity in Boyce Avenue until 1950. We started off with a house that had two rooms with a wooden floor and my father put an extension on, couldn't afford the floorboards, so it had a dirt floor and we had a dirt floor for, it must have been a year or so, until we could afford the floorboards. Uh, that's the way it was. It was, you know, the end of the war and all the rest of it and everybody was poor and we were, we were no different. Like most children of the day, they used to all run around barefooted. Shoes were a luxury. Yeah, we... I don't mean... We, we used, to, used to run around barefoot anyhow. We didn't use many shoes. I didn't have a shoe problem because we didn't use them very much. So that wasn't a hassle. Clothes weren't so bad. Uh, don't know where they came from, but they didn't have clothes problems. With their father away a lot working on the railway, they would all get up to a lot of mischief but it was all clean fun. We had an excellent life as kids. You couldn't get a better kid's life than what we had. We just went berserk in the bush. It was uh, our place halfway down the road there and you could do whatever you like and we did and enjoyed it. We had a tank, we used to paddle the tank a bit. Wouldn't that, wasn't that a dangerous thing to do? I don't know, it probably was. It could have been dangerous, I don't know, because it was, it was a round tank and the hole was in the middle and normal or whoever else would get inside and there'd, there'd be enough for one to stand up to see where we were going and row it with a stick, whatever we had. But if it tipped over, it would take a while to fill up, so it, was, it, it probably wasn't dangerous. I don't think it was dangerous. Did you ever tip it over? Oh, yeah, a few times. <laughs> and we never sunk it. We always, it, was, it was my father's tank and he had it full of water, a fresh water tank it was. It was uh, 100, 100 gallons. So it was a small round, about that high tank. And uh, yeah, we used to put it up back on the stand weekend when my father came home. The rest of the time it was our bait. <laughs> oh yeah, my father was away all week on the railways. And my mother couldn't manage four kids. So we used to do whatever we liked. And it was great. I had an excellent life as a kid. You couldn't get better. <laughs> In 1940, he went to Wyong Primary School. And when the high school was open in 1945, it was just the right time for George to attend. Went to Wyong Primary School and then Wyong High School when it was built. Because it was portables behind the, well beside the primary school first, then they built the high school and we went into a brand new. How'd you get to school? We walked to school about a mile up the road. Hail, rain or shine. After going to year nine of high school, it was time for George to get a job. So he started as an apprentice boilermaker at Cardiff Railway. My first job was a boilermaker, apprentice boilermaker. My father thought I should have a trade. And uh, boiler, I don't know where the boilermaker came from, but it was a boilermaker. And I was apprentice boilermaker at Cardiff Workshops, building steam locomotives. I never finished my apprenticeship. Uh, I always wanted to get into electronics. So I ended up getting a job at the radio shop at Wyong. And that's, I ended up buying the shop. So that's where I wanted to be. Having started at the electronics shop in Wyong as a TV technician, this was exactly George's passion. 
I was always interested in it and I read about it and learned as much as I could about it. And, you know, I, was just, I always wanted to be a techie bloke for some reason. I don't know why, but I was and it turned out that way. It was a three-way partnership, the shop in Wyong and uh, Bob Marley and Heather Ganey and myself. So it was a three-way partnership. MCG Television, Marley Collie Ganey. <laughs> then before 1959, he heard how fantastic Western Australia was. So packing his bags, his little brother bro, off they went. That's where he got a job with Phillips Electronics. Well, yeah, it was before 1959. I, I had a mate, Athol Gunn, I used to go to school with. And Athol was with Qantas. And he was telling us about Western Australia, how good it was over there. So I thought, oh, I'd better have a look at Western Australia and see, how, see if it really is good over there, and it was. So uh, Bro and I packed up and we drove across to Western Australia and uh, we were there for, I don't know, around two years. And uh, I got a job over there with Phillips. As far as girls went, George was more interested in electronics until he met Helen in 1960. They then got married in 1962 at Wyong. Yeah, I was, I was, she was working at Stradhaven Guest House and I used to drive past there. I used to see her going to work in the morning and I thought she was all right, so I pulled up and said good day one day and she said good day back and probably pulled up again the next day and said good day twice and she said good day twice and so it developed and we ended up getting married. So that's how that started all off. They were married for about 10 years without having any children, so they decided to adopt both David and Paul. But adopting Paul, Helen then became pregnant with Michelle. We were married, didn't have any children for a few years, thought we should have children, then we adopted David, and still didn't fall pregnant, and then we adopted Paul, then she became pregnant with Michelle. <laughs> and that put an end to it all. It was then time to move on from the business at Wyong, so George bought into the TV hire at the entrance, New South Wales. Oh, OK, I bought the business at the entrance. Yeah, the TV hire business, and uh, I was doing TV service as well. I'm a TV technician, so and it, and it grew. You, you start a business and you, and you can't stop the things growing is the problem, and that one grew. It just got bigger and bigger, and yeah, that was good. With all this interest in television, George also tinkered with colour TV in the early 70s. And with his mates, were broadcasting colour TV two years before it began in Australia, 1975. First started as a TV technician in 56. That's when television started in Australia. From Channel 9 comes the first television program in Australia. Station TCN presents This Is Television. So it, it blasted off and I was interested in it and... It was great. I thought it was good. Really good. And were you, how did you learn to get into that business? I was always interested in electronics. I could, and I've always been able to read a book and understand it. I've been lucky in that respect. If I read it, I can understand it. And I read a book on electronics and understood it. He always enjoyed interesting hobbies, and one of those was flight. Yeah, always been interested in aircraft. Even when I was a little kid, I, when I was going to school, I used to cut up propellers and stick them out the bus window and go to school. So, yeah, aircraft have always been interesting to me. So did you do anything with that, that interest? Did you...? Yeah, but I built aircraft. I built a few aircraft over the years and flown them and all that sort of thing. And what sort of thing did you fly? What? Oh, I powered hang gliders and fixed wings and uh, fibreglass. I built two fibreglass ones, full fibreglass single-place aircraft, sapphires, two sapphires, but they were full fibreglass aeroplanes. One man sits in. A pusher motor behind you. I don't know how many gyros I built. One, only one, I don't know. George has had a few battles in life, but now he faces his biggest, terminal brain cancer. I've got a tumour in my brain and I'm not even aware of it. I've got no feeling, no nothing. And can they do anything at all for you for this tumour? Well, they've done nothing about it so far, so apparently not and dying's compulsory in the end anyhow, so I'm not worried about it. And, and is that what the outcome's going to be with this disease? No idea. I don't know at the moment. I'm happy. I'm not aware of anything at all. I mean, no pain, no feelings, no nothing. I can't understand it all. It's quite strange, actually. I think that's the big problem with this, this disease, is that, is that, or this cancer, is that 
You don't feel pain. No one feels pain. It's quite strange, yeah. So, I don't know. The way it are. No, it was good fun. I, my childhood was excellent. I couldn't have got a better childhood, really. It was excellent.